the enemy to beauty is not ugliness, it's ignorance. When you say the jewelry as art, I completely disagree with this. In any continent, any civilization, there is jewelry, there is ornament. This is the very first form of art, you know, open the, the mind and, and to look at gemstones only as one dimension of jewelry to ornate uh, a design. What I understand is there's only two countries in the world. They celebrate craftsmanship. They put craftsmen as master. One is France and one is Japan. If you don't preserve craft, we could not preserve our legacy and our heritage. And bravo. Thank you so much, Pearl. Welcome to Pearl and Broadcast. Today I am in Paris and I'm in this really beautiful old building and this building is Leco School of Jewelry and Art. And they have just newly moved here and I would like to introduce Elise Gonnet Pode to I mean to give us a background of the school. Thank you Pearl and welcome. Welcome to uh, this um, new venue of L'Ecole, the School of Jewelry Arts, where uh, we are at the moment uh, together. It's, it's a preview for you, because uh, we're going to open in the spring uh, this, uh, this new destination of jewelry culture in Paris. We've been established in Paris in 2012 to share about jewelry culture at large, uh, from antiquity to contemporary artists, looking at uh, jewelry as a universal language in all civilizations and culture. To do so, we have a very wide array of programs, uh, starting with courses uh, in uh, um, the universe of gemstones, history of, of jewelry uh, and craftsmanship. Uh, we have uh, talks, conversations, which are held in person or, or online. We have as well uh, exhibitions uh, uh, dedicated to, to jewelry. And we very uh, recently uh, launched a, a podcast called uh, The Voice of Jewels. So what is this podcast about? This podcast is about um, jewelry. Uh, the, the first, uh, the first um, chapter uh, is, uh, is around um, uh, love jewelry. Uh, when you say love jewelry, what do you mean? Um, sentimental jewelry, ah. I would say. Uh, and we have different episodes uh, in French and, and English, uh, and it's already very well received. And here is in this new uh, building of uh, Merci Argento, uh, it's a historical uh, Parisian uh, mansion from the um, 18th century, uh, which has never been open to public. So we are oh, getting ready for that. Um, and not only will we offer here uh, exhibitions in a larger uh, space uh, compared to, to our uh, current uh, campus behind Place Vendôme, but also courses, conversations, and two uh, uh, venues dedicated to uh, books uh, as uh, books uh, um, in today's digital world we consider book is, is still a very relevant way of sharing mm -hmm. jury knowledge first of all we have uh, many publications at l'école uh, thanks to our research department and, and around all our exhibitions we'll have a, a bookshop uh, called l'escarboucle that's a french uh, word meaning red uh, gemstones dedicated to jewelry the first bookshop fully dedicated wow. to jewelry in paris so precious metals uh, gemstones minerals uh, jewelry history and decorative arts and one uh, library the first and largest library in europe dedicated to jewelry with 10,000 books uh, will have three salons um, uh, in this building open to public by appointment with eight um, uh, seats for researchers uh, to come and work, uh, uh, researchers, designers, uh, anyone uh, who wants to come and study uh, guided by our librarians here will be uh, very welcome. So we are very much looking forward to opening the second venue in Paris while the original venue will be revamped mm -hmm. and we'll have a surprise maybe for another episode <laughs> to talk about. So Beautiful. Uh, what, is, uh, what is interesting is, um, let me share with the audience, is is Leco is a school 
not just a simple school, but they managed to get craft, uh, craftsmen who are supposed to, to, you call it transmission, right? Yes. They pass from generation to generation. And they managed to get these craftsmen to share the knowledge, to share the craftsmanship with everyone, with all the, with all the students who's interested to make juries. Um, and I think the world has changed because I think craftsmen, families, children, the, they do not necessarily want to be a craftsman. And how, and how do you manage to, to persuade all these craftsmen to share those knowledge? Jury uh, has long been a very secretive world, uh, maybe mm. intimidating uh, for some. You know, traditionally, <coughs> One would become a, a jeweler or a stone setter uh, because, um, or a polisher bec because his uh, father, his mother uh, was yes, working absolutely. in a workshop, and this was like the natural continuation of the of the family tradition yeah. somehow. Um, while uh, today uh, um, the profession is is welcoming, uh, you know. Uh, young uh, talents from all backgrounds. And, and we believe um, opening the doors of jewelry to everyone is really critical to um, make sure that the beauty of jewelry, its significance uh, in all um, cultures, civilizations, is really the, the key to um, continu continuing the transmission in the next uh, generations. Now everybody is teaching online. You know, you do courses online, you do Zoom, you do all these things. Why do you need a f such a big physical space? Well, um, we, we believe that um, hands-on and, and in-person uh, learning, you know, from human being, from your craft human being, uh, you know, th there is so much you can, of course, observe on a beautiful video, uh, you know, of... Uh, a craftsman hand, maybe setting a gemstone or, or polishing uh, metal, but um, the understanding that you get and and the yes, the experience, the emotion from trying, uh, you know, for yourself uh, and looking at uh, gemstones for yourself is is ca cannot be replaced uh, by the online experience. This is why we we are uh, you know still. Uh, very committed to in-person learning, you know, in-person transmission. Mm -hmm. and, and when you visit an exhibition to look uh, for yourself yeah, at, at the piece. Uh, of course, in the recent years that the world went through, uh, digital really helped to, to still stay connected and, and to still learn and, and have um, some different kind of education. And even at L'Ecole, this is when we started our online talks and conversations that we still uh, offer, you know, every month. Uh, but this, this wouldn't be uh, our only way of transmitting the jury culture. Yeah, of course, when it's you all look about at the juries and, and, how it's, and see how it sets, it's very difficult to translate. And in, this is very essential. Yeah. You know, jewelry is something one would wear uh, on, on your skin yeah. or, or on, on your Absolutely. clothes. Absolutely, I understand. Um, so so you, you can't completely disconnect from, from that uh, very uh, uh, essential. It needs to be uh, more personal than That's in very personal. personal, yes. Jury is, is probably the, the, the most personal uh, uh, form of, of art with uh, yeah. couture, maybe. Yeah. But uh, yes. Lico is a school that attracts people or students to become a designer or just to get the knowledge or they want to become a craftsman. What is the objective of them doing it? Of course, we all know that, you know, um, it's very sad that craft is losing its way and sometimes the craft is completely lost because there's no one to pass it, transmitting it, uh, pass it on. Mm. But what is the main objective of having the school? Because, you know, you want to cultivate uh, interest in craft, or you want to have a new, a new stable of uh, craftsmen, a new stable of jewelry designer. Well, actually, <coughs> our main uh, purpose is really to have um, an audience um, as wide as possible from all ages and backgrounds to appreciate jewelry as a form of art. 
first of all. So we are here to, um, you know, um, help everyone to discover or rediscover what uh, jewelry is um, from, you know, antique civilizations to contemporary artists. And we do that through different ways of introduction. Um, then uh, for uh, our students who aim, uh, you know, to um, become um, a jeweler, a jewelry designer after understanding better, thanks to our program, what it is all about, then we can um, um, indicate them which professional school they can uh, go to uh, for a diploma. Yeah, because you did say that this is a foundation course. This yes. is a basic yes. foundation course. Exactly. But when you say the jewelry as art, I completely disagree with this. Oh, because is, is that so? Because, uh, no, because you know, art is many forms. Uh, definitely, it's not fine art. It's decorative art. Yeah, decorative art. Absolutely. Definitely yes. agree. Because decorative art is using hand craft yes. and all that. So when you say that it is a foundation course, so people come in, they learn about because a, a lot of people they want to. They love jewelry, so they want yes. to learn more about jewelry. Not, not necessarily they want to be a profession. That's right, and they want to understand better their own collection or uh, to yes find ways of looking at the gemstones, of looking at a piece, of looking at the craftsmanship. And very often, you know, after after attending one of our uh, courses, then they would look at their own piece or they would uh, look at an exhibition yeah. at um, at a creation uh, in. A different way from the front from the back understanding what setting means what polishing or um, uh, all the techniques uh, uh, involved uh, but know, i think strategically imply. you got you all has done a fantastic thing because hong kong is is the biggest jewelry market in the world so having that and every ladies love juries so then and not only ladies oh, oh, i know i know i know i have men friends who's who's been collecting stones juries and everything absolutely right right unfortunately they can't wear it they will give to the wife wife to wear it and take it back but you're absolutely right so so it's really interesting that who are the students who's actually coming especially in asia we have art lovers, yeah, we, art lovers. Have, uh, we have um, art addicts, uh, you know, cultural uh, uh, savvy people. We have uh, families as well uh, coming. Uh, we, we have uh, collectors. Uh, we have uh, young uh, graduates who wish to uh, choose, uh, you know, their next uh, so step for their career. So it's, it's very diverse. Uh, and, and also we see that depending on the exhibition topic that we showcase, uh, the audience uh, can change. In, in Hong Kong last year, we had a beautiful uh, exhibition. We showcased a collection of men's rings. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were all belonging, a few hundreds uh, actually wow. of them. Um, many of them in, uh, in silver, so, you know, bikers, uh, rings mm. or, or uh, memento mori. So it, it shows that uh, jewelry at large uh, is very eclectic and that um, the most important is probably not whether the material is precious or not, whether it features gemstones or not. It's, it's an ornament, a talisman, it's a meaning because uh, one would always remember, be it in a very ancient culture or in contemporary times, you know, in any continent, any civilization, there is jewelry. There is ornament. This is the very first form of art, you know, as per uh, the archaeological findings, the first uh, thing uh, we found uh, yeah, were jewelry ornaments. You, 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 yes. You One of the very interesting things that I would really love to talk to you about today is about craft. Yes. Yeah, because I'm very interested in craft. And what I, what I know, what I understand is there's only two countries in the world they celebrate craftsmanship. They put craftsmen as master. One is France, one is Japan. So all other countries around the world, we don't give the necessary respect to craftsmen. So how would you encourage the world? Because without craftsmen, craftsmen, when they pass their craft, generation to generation, so what they are passing through is not just a craft, but a legacy. And it it's is a, legacy a legacy and a heritage Absolutely. of yes. their culture. And I find out, I find that in China, 
as such is we are losing that that fair you know really great culture because i don't i mean many of the young people they don't want to be a craftsman because they're not respected right but whereas here and in and in Japan, they're like master. They are celebrated, not just respected. How would you, um, how would you encourage, you know, all these different old culture about preserving craft? Well, to answer <coughs> your question, I I would say um, by education, uh, and this is uh, where uh, l'école can help and and support. Um, you know, I, I'm a uh, very big fan of an initiative called Homo Faber mm. uh, by the Michelangelo Foundation, uh, to, um, which preserves uh, craftsmanship. And its uh, director, uh, actually, Roberto Cavalli, once said, and this is a sentence I always remember and, and repeat, that uh, the um, enemy to beauty is not ugliness, it's ignorance. And... I think it's, it's, it's absolutely so right. true. Yeah, so true. Um, and, <coughs> and this is where uh, I believe l'école, you know, humbly uh, can contribute wherever it is established or traveling in the world to showcase the beauty of the craftsmanship. And, you know, in Hong Kong, we had a beautiful exhibition which then traveled here in Paris called um, uh, Golden Treasure. And uh, this showcased an, an amazing private collection of uh, Chinese gold ornaments. Uh, uh, for some of them, they dated back to 3,000 years ago. Um, and it shows how uh, refined the craftsmanship of, of gold was in um, ancient China. And this was extremely inspiring uh, for contemporary visitors. Um, you know, we had visitors uh, here in Paris from China who were so moved uh, by yes. seeing this. So by showcasing, um, you know, uh, such pieces to the general public. Uh, this is how, by developing the knowledge, that we can uh, probably encourage the next generations to um, go for uh, learning crafts and, and perpetuating these uh, crafts, uh, while, of course, being very aware of the contemporary environment. Mm -hmm. I always see art as a cultural bridge, but then you told me that Jewelry is a cultural bridge. I can't agree with you. So can you explain to me your point of view? We, we um, probably agree in a way that uh, jewelry is a form of art, of decorative art. I mean, of course um, it is a form of decorative art because there's so much, I mean, it's about creativities, mm -hmm. it's, about, it's about, you know, using your hand, creating this, you know, it's very different when you have a hand-finished product than your machine-finished product. The patina, mm. the hand problem, even a little imperfection is beautiful. It is, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and so, but you say that jewelry is a cultural bridge. I can't see how, how, how jewelry is a cultural bridge as um, such. There is a jewelry culture in... Everywhere. 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 That's... Um, that's what I mean, uh, and and um, jewelry is um, a jewelry piece is um, a message. It it conveys when you look at a jewelry piece, you can feel an emotion. Um, it it conveys something. It um, um, jewelry are very symbolic. Um, when they are offered uh, to a loved one, when when they are part of a, of a legacy, uh, they can be very symbolic. Also historically, when when you look at, um, um, you know, we were um, having um, last week um, a lecture with some of the researchers from uh, uh, the Collège de France. Uh, it's uh, an institution um, supporting um, a lot of cultural initiatives and and. Um, we, we studied um, jewelry um, represented in, in the historical paintings. And, mm. and you could observe how some uh, jewels were passed on, uh, you know, from one European court to, to the other. And they were represented in the official portraits. So, so um, uh, be it, uh, you know, a sentimental jeweler uh, that someone would uh, uh, offer or, or um, to... to 
uh, a loved person or uh, or to uh, an heir uh, or be it uh, something acquired, uh, you know, that's um, a regalia and, and it can be very symbolic in, in that way. Uh, then um, it, it can be uh, uh, very symbolic in... Um, in uh, some cultures because of the material, because of the technique. I agree to a certain extent is because when I'm, I agree in the aesthetic value because when I see Indian jewelry, which, which I like, old yes. Indian jewelry, the, Kundan, the yeah, aesthetic yeah. is very different than, of course, the Chinese one. Mm -hmm. The Chinese is completely because I collect a lot of, of peacock feather, uh, not uh, kingfisher feather. Yes. Juries, which is this blue. And then when you look at a reason I went to Africa, I love all those African beads. So all yes. those aesthetic, mm. aesthetically, it is different. So doesn't mean that I'm Chinese, I've been educated abroad. I would not appreciate that. I actually, I love the differences of culture because yes, that's of, the, the, beauty of, of the difference aesthetic as yes. such. Yes. So with that, I understand that, yes, maybe there's a cultural bridge because it's the appreciation of and of a different culture. But many people um, is not as open-minded because I love different cultures. So, so it's very hard that if you only decided that my, you know, my, because you're conditioned to see certain design, sign juries, they could not accept the other one. So... So it cannot form that bridge as such. Well, this is why we try to um, open the perspective and to, to um, yes, open the jewelry world to everyone through our programs. We, we have one course called Around the World in Jewelry, where we present, um, you know, jewelry and ornaments in all continents uh, to, to really encourage to, to have that kind of, uh, of, of perspective and and to 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 probably rethink uh, the way we um, we look at uh, the notion of, of preciousness and do you um, believe that when you are you know when you're living in a country when you stay in a, in a city yes. so you your eyes are conditioned to certain aesthetic right so if there's anything which is different from what you see, your immediate reaction will say that, oh, it's ugly. Oh, it's not, you know, is it immediate because you're not used to that aesthetic. So culturally, then you re reject this culture because you, because you're so used to A and then when B comes along and you say, it's not, it's not great. To me, it's, it's really to encourage open-mindedness, and this is what we try to do at L'Ecole, is, is to, uh, to present the the wide, the wide eclecticism and diversity of what jewelry is, and then this is very personal, probably like a form of art uh, that one would appreciate or, or, or not. Education uh, and knowledge uh, are, are the solution. Don't you think that you know we live in a, a world where there is really strong Western influences. You open a magazine, it's all the advertisement of all this jewelry brand. So our eyes is actually, we being conditioned. So anything that we judge, we are using that aesthetic for value to judge on what is, what is beautiful and what is not. It's very hard it now, after you've been conditioned from the beginning, you know, from, from when you're born, you look at magazines, it's not just in France or in Europe or in America, but in, in the whole of Asia, we are, we're used to that. Of course, in some of the countries, like in India, they have your, your Indian jewelry, you have it. In Thailand, you have their own craft, so they mm. give, that, give a different aesthetic. But mostly, we are following the Western, appreciation of aesthetic so we're conditioned well um, humbly what we are trying to do at, at l'école is, is is really to to showcase uh, all types of, of jewelry and differences uh, to show that they are uh, beautiful and that there, there is uh, really um, um, 
it's really worth discovering uh, all, all the world uh, heritage of jewelry. This is probably why, you know, when it was showcased in Paris, the Golden Treasures exhibition um, showcasing uh, Chinese uh, treasures uh, was the, the most uh, popular uh, among the Parisian audience. This is uh, by uh, really um, um, opening the world of jewelry in uh, in all its dimensions that, that we can uh, uh, probably encourage a more uh, universal uh, um, look. That's great because yeah. my favorite line have been always been applying, Western domination of culture. No, you know, the more we, uh, we launch research projects, the more we meet uh, collectors, uh, um, I think the, the more humbling it is. Uh, um, of course, uh, France, for instance, uh, with the Place Vendôme, is one of the world, uh, you know, uh, jury concentration. Ju jury concentration. <laughs> yeah. uh, but there oh, are yeah. uh, there are many uh, that we that we discussed of course, about. Of course, of and, course. And um, if you look, for instance, in in Singapore, they have at the Asian Civilizations Museum a fantastic jewelry gallery yeah. where you uh, discover uh, uh, jewelry crafts. Uh, you know know from Java, from Borneo, from, from many uh, islands and, 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 and countries and, and, and this is endless. That's uh, fantastic and, and, and what we are looking forward to doing is, is to showcasing more uh, all this uh, beautiful diversity, and, and diversity of, of, of yeah. jewelry because uh, that's um, uh, Actually, all this and then less topic of study. <laughs> yeah, and, and actually, all this is is encouraging people to be more open-minded. Absolutely. And then, what are the crafts that has been lost, especially in France, that you we cannot recover? One uh, craft I know of in in jewelry is the gold lace. Uh, it was a very specific technique, uh, which was. Um, uh, popular until the 1950s, to my knowledge, and and the then the the fashion and the style, mm, uh, change. the taste uh, change. changed. So there was no longer any demand for that, and and the jewelers, you know, uh, went uh, to. Uh, I mean, they, they developed. Extinguished. Yes, uh, or, or they simply uh, created other types uh, of of jewelry and techniques because that particular. Uh, Feature no and more, style yeah. no was no longer, yeah, no uh, more, no one's and um, and yes, uh, uh, probably at the time, you know, even in, in France, where as you said, there is this appreciation for craftsmanship and and to protect the craftsmanship, um, sometimes uh, or or probably uh, in these decades, it was not yet uh, so so much a focus. Um, mm. Then could you find this craft, let's say in Italy? Or in China, or in Bangkok. Bangkok is very good in in, in doing gold. Yes, yes. And uh, and India as well. Can't you find all that same craftsmanship? Not Similar. to my knowledge. Maybe it exists, but um, you know what's fantastic, and we see that at at Lecole, we have since 2017 a department of research, uh, and they work with universities and, and right. researchers on all uh, kind of uh, jewelry related topics. So this is exactly what we uh, what we can work on. And at the moment, actually, and this is probably what uh, I should have uh, shared uh, first, is that uh, we have a great research project on the Celtic. Uh, talk. Uh, um, we today don't know uh, anymore uh, what is the technique which was used to create this talk. So with a group of researchers and, and scientists, we are trying to recreate uh, one and to, uh, through this process, uh, to, to actually find out what the craftsmanship was. So once we know, we'll keep you posted and, and we'll have a know. whole publication and, uh, and capsule exhibition around that uh, uh, research and, and really to try to bring back the craftsmanship to understand it and, and see how we can uh, revive it. So this is, uh, in a way, part of our research approach. So you have a school in Shanghai and you have a school in Hong Kong and you have a school, going to have a school in Dubai. Right. So all these other countries, including France, mm -hmm. you have different craftsmen. 
Right. So do they do the same thing or do they do different? And so do you take exchanges to come to different part of your, I mean, different school and then they create a different course? Well, we have one uh, curriculum uh, which is uh, the, the same uh, for, for all our campuses and also the traveling schools that we can have in Japan or in the Americas. Um, having said that, especially through the exhibitions or various programs, uh, we can have um, uh, a local resonance and thanks to uh, you know collectors, institutions, uh, researchers from all of, over the world, we, we, we can have a cross-cultural uh, dialogue related to jewelry. Another big question I need to discuss with you is in Asia especially, um, they love gemstones. Uh, the stones, the flawless stone, pink diamond, intense yellow, whatever, is all about stones. Now, I always thought that stones is completely, we give values to a stone. If Today, we don't consider a diamond is, is, is anything but, um, but just, uh, just something thing for an airplane machine. So it doesn't mean anything. Mm. So I always thought that what makes jewelry wonderful is the design and the craftsmanship. Now, I would really like to hear your point of view. Of course, you know, stones, as we just discussed, mm. you have cuts, right? Now, and now uh, multifaceted cut, cut, of course, now is done in India. And then you have the Belgium cut, and then Russia is banned now. Mm. But isn't that most important is about a design? With a design, and then you have the craftsman, which makes it really amazing you know it's like jar you know jar sometimes you use really in uh, sometimes even crystals you use but it's the design that makes it the design and the craftsmanship ch change everything yeah when we For talk me, about jewelry we talk about gemstones indeed yeah. uh, I, I agree gemstones uh you know there are the diamonds of course the colorless uh, diamonds yeah. and then there are all the other uh, all wide array yeah. of gemstones and what we try to convey through the schools and our programs is maybe to change perspective when we look at gemstones not only indeed as you mentioned to look at the number of carats or commercial yeah, value or, but but to to really um first of all have our students hold a stone look at the gemstone look at an inclusion uh, maybe appreciate the beauty of an inclusion understand where it comes from because um, in in gemstones there is maybe a dimension of um, eternity you know they were formed billions of years ago and they will probably be passed on to a generation so in that regard maybe it's a story of transmission too and um, when you study the history of jewelry in a different civilizations and 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 periods of time you can understand or, or in different areas of the world that the same gemstone would not have the same meaning uh, that the color of the gemstones can uh, can convey a different message uh, you know uh, that for instance uh, pearls would be in a renaissance for mm. young ladies uh, or even uh, for um, you know some kings who were wearing uh, in, in the late course, middle yeah. ages pearls and and um, and yes uh, we we really try to to open the, the mind and, and to look at gemstones only as one dimension of jewelry to ornate uh, a design. Uh, um, um, and, and maybe um, the exhibition that we currently have in uh, Dubai uh, around emeralds shows the rough gemstone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the cut gemstones and examples of beautiful uh, pieces featuring emeralds which have been either cut, engraved, faceted, and then set on a design uh, beautifully mounted. So it really shows how the art of jewelry, the design, the craftsmanship uh, transforms, you know, uh, nature's treasure into uh, a, a piece of art you can wear. Because for me, is the design is the creativity. It is. Yeah, yes. And the craftsman is the details of the hands and how you create and, and how do you make reality make into reality an exquisite design. So stone is only a supplementary 
something. But obviously, in the jewelry mm. world, stone is number one. Everything is a design, you know, or design, craft is not as valuable as a stone. But then you look at some, and uh, you know, some of the brands, I, I want to draw again, Jars, because mm. Jar is the only brand that have a museum show in the mat. And when you see that, then everything that I thought is right should be right. It's not about the stone, it's about the design, it's about the craftsmanship. The craftsmanship for me is really important. Probably there is today a lack uh, of understanding on how, um, how much time is involved in a, in a craftsmanship of the jewelry peacemaking. And, and, and there are uh, many um, uh, contemporary artists, designers, or historical houses who um, propose, uh, and this is what, what you can experience at L'Ecole, when you are for two or four hours behind the workbench and we, when you realize how long it takes just to do one very single step, then you understand that a piece can take a few hundreds or a few thousand hours of, of handcraft right to uh, to be completed so this is uh, why indeed jewelry no, is not only about gemstones at all uh, but it's about uh, human hands combined of course, because this craft and because i'm also very interested in today's young people the 3d printing juries because i thought this is my my you know i thought every design is about is evolving within a contemporary lifestyle, a contemporary culture, and of course, jewelry in the past is is only for the aristocrat or the very wealthy fee families. But today we have juries, which is now juries can be be uh, can be worn by all the young people, so they can afford to buy it. And technology create, you know, technology is very important. So now we have technology versus craft. My dream, my dream what is, is to, your have, dream, Pearl? to have a 3D print, but then using craft to carve out the 3D print and set it. Ah. So it's a combination mm. with the both. And it will be, I mean, I mean, that's, that's representing what we are talking about. We cannot deny technology, no. but we have to embrace craft. So I thought that is something that maybe you can encourage your absolutely. students. And absolutely, absolutely. Because I think that's 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 really you know a re because I think the creativities should not mm. just limit it to one material. No, we not at all. We should use everything to create something new. Jewelry is not uh, only something which has to be made on with precious material. No. And at L'Ecole, this is something we are trying to convey as well, yeah. that um, any uh, talisman, any ornament, and we, we have um, a course about uh, uh, talismans and amulets, show that uh, the notion itself of preciousness okay. is, is very much related to a, a moment of time or a fashion or, um, or, or one... Um, vision or one angle, but uh, a pendant made of a simple shell can be very precious Actually, to you because yeah. it means, uh, you know, it was given to you or, or by, by someone uh, you love or, or, or because it's a memory. Um, and, and yes, it's, uh, there is this um, relativity in, yeah, in a way. One, um, I always remember one thing really, really struck my mind was a 1930s Cartier in wood just wood, but set with diamonds in it. I thought it was really <laughs> special because it's nothing fancy, but just wood. Yes, if, if you beautiful. look at uh, jewelry around yeah, the world, it's beautiful. which beautiful. this is also uh, something we yeah, look at. Something is different. It's not loud, but something. Oh. Mm, yes. I, l I love everything a little bit quirky. <laughs> and I, and what, what I think, you know, in this world now, what you are doing is amazing preserving crafts, spreading, telling, tell, I mean, encouraging, I mean, the world actually, yes. to preserve craft. If you don't preserve craft, we could not preserve our legacy and our heritage. There, there is a jewelry craftsmanship everywhere in, in the world. And it's and all very different. And it's all very different. And throughout uh, uh, art history, uh, jewelry history courses, this is what we try to convey, to encourage really at, uh, 
the general public to look at jewelry as a form of art, of, of decorative art, and to, to appreciate all dimensions of jewelry, be it uh, the material, uh, the, the metal, the gemstones, the symbolism behind uh, the, the... Multicultural. Yes, yes. Elise, when is the opening of these new facilities? We are opening in spring. Uh, and we are very excited as the inaugural exhibition is dedicated to stage jewelry. So it's costume jewelries. Yes, uh, it's uh, you know we were touching on uh, yeah. earlier on what is precious, what is not uh -uh. precious, and and uh, stage jewelry from uh, Comédie Française, the French National Theatre, uh, wow. you know, uh, collection uh, is exhibited here, and and it's uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, non-precious materials, uh, so mostly uh, imitation gemstones, uh, you know, uh, colored glass or, or uh, non-precious metals, but crafted in the same way as uh, high jewelry would be crafted because it was meant to be uh, seen uh, from afar, uh, you know, by the audience uh, and worn uh, by uh, the actors and ac actresses uh, on stage. How wonderful. So, uh, so yes, um, great. We, we are showcasing a jewelry which doesn't have to be precious the way we uh, look at preciousness uh, today, maybe, uh, but precious because of their history, because of uh, um, who were the actors and actresses who wore it and because of the, the uh, uh, workmanship uh, behind. A must visit exhibition. Hey, after watching this episode, I'm sure that there and and there will be many interested parties who want to know more and more about about the school and who wants maybe they want to be going online or visiting here. How do they find? I mean, can you give any contact or information for people to to know more about the school? Yes, of course. Uh we, we have our website, uh, l'école van Cleef uh, and all our campuses around the world uh, where, uh, uh, you know, people can come in person and have uh, information to register to all our programs. Thank you, Elise. It's so great to be here. Thank you for allowing us to film this, uh, to have this podcast film here. Very glad to welcome you and your team, Pearl. Thank you.